So I had already given a talk on the second coming of Christ. Most of you must have watched it. And if you have not, it is available on the YouTube in English as well as in Hindi. And both uh, the things can be watched anytime. And now, today, in the follow-up of this, I am going to tell you about how to be ready for the rapture. That is the issue. We should know clearly that how we will be raptured. And that is a thing which is very important as a believer. We should know it, how it is going to happen, how the steps are there to be present before the Lord and be taken away by Him during the rapture. So, the first and foremost thing I would like to bring into the notice of you all is that uh, this will be a height of conceit that we would ever think that we would make ourselves ready to be raptured home to heaven by the simple force of our will. Our self-will, our self-righteousness, our understandings cannot make us ready for rapture. And that is very true in the word of God also. When we find it in Jeremiah 10, 23, where it reads like this, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh direct his steps. So, when we read this word, it is clear that on our own, we cannot direct our steps so that we can be ready for the rapture. We, there is the first and foremost thing for any believer to be raptured. In fact, first is to become a believer. And that is how you become is, we have to be born again. If we are not born again, that is what the Bible says, the salvation, then we cannot be raptured with Christ in His coming. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Whenever Jesus says, verily, verily, these are the verses that are very, very important. We should note it and understand it and get the real essence of the truth in that verse. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The Bible clearly defines that if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Forget about entering. You cannot even see the kingdom of God. And then he says in five and six words that until unless you are born of water and spirit, then you can enter the kingdom of God. And born of water is your physical birth. I have already explained in some of my teachings very clearly. It is not related to water baptism. Water baptism is a doctrine of the Bible which has to be taken only after when we become born again. And then he says we have to be born of the spirit. And the spirit birth cannot take place by our own efforts. Nothing we can do on our own with some self-righteous deeds or anything so that we can become born again. So to be a born again yet is our choice. That is true. It is true according to the word of God that born again we have the choice and how it happens is when we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That means when we accept that we are sinners and we have to get saved and we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and confess and believe that He took away our sins, was punished and has risen again. That is what the concept of salvation is and that is what Paul says in Romans 10.9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is how we become a born again child of God. Now the good news from the Bible is, when we read 1 Thessalonica 5.23, where it is saying it is the will of God, the Father to sanctify us in our spirit, soul and body and keep us blameless till coming of Christ. That is what is going to happen. The rapture is coming of Christ to take away the church. And who is wanting it? That is the will of God, the Father to sanctify our, our spirit, soul and body. And the second verse following it is 5.24. It's wonderful. It says, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. That is where you have to understand the grace of God can only operate in us to make us prepared for the rapture. 
but that is some things which we do that is accepting as i told you until unless we consent to get safe we cannot be safe grace cannot operate in us so that is how we have to balance our uh, things from the word of god and understand the truth of the word of god with how it is going to happen now the next thing which is very clear in the word of god is that if we have learned anything about the lord jesus christ we have learned that not by our works of righteousness that which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us that is clearly spelled out is in titus 3:5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us so our salvation is completely based not on our righteous self righteous deeds but what jesus did on the cross that is by the mercy of god that he has sent his son that's what the john 3:16 says god loved the world so much that he gave his begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not die not perish but have eternal life so in other words when i'm saying this we must be trusting in his merit that is merit of jesus christ and not any so called worthiness of our own for salvation sanctification and eternity see in nothing our worthiness can give us salvation neither sanctification or living in eternity in fact eternal life starts the day which we have received and get born again uh, this is very clearly reflected when we read romans 4 3 onwards when it is spe- uh, spoken about abraham where it says for what saith the scripture abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness that means your righteousness right standing with god is coming from believing on god the god of this bible abraham believed and he was this was counted righteousness for him that is a right standing with god and then he says now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of death that means if you involve any deeds of yours for your salvation then it will not be grace then it will be a reward or a wage whereas our salvation is based on grace through faith through by grace through faith that's the only way we can be saved that's in ephesians 28 and then for the fifth verse is very beautiful and it becomes very discomfortable for many people who are self righteous people where the word says but to him that worketh not that means he doesn't work for his salvation but believeth on him that justified the ungodly people that's wonderful you know justifying a godly people appears to be tenable but here the word of god says that he justifies the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness that is what is happening when we are trusting on jesus christ for completely for our salvation that is how we are counted righteous before god that is the god righteousness and not our self righteousness so okay now we have to receive salvation completely as a gift we cannot earn it that's what ephesians 2:8 very clearly says for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god nobody can earn salvation according to the word of god now when we are now clearly establish these basic truths about our born again spirit that is how our spirit has completely been made new and then the salvation which is not earned but is a gift based on the grace and faith now what we have established we must presently be living completely by the faith of the son of god that's what paul said in galatians 2:20 i have been crucified with christ it is not i who live it but christ liveth in me and the life which now i live in the flesh that is what he is saying very clear the life which now i live in the flesh i live by the faith of jesus christ not even his faith the king james version very clearly says by the faith of jesus christ who loved and died for me that is the gospel so that is how we have to live till you will be raptured completely depending 
on the faith of the Son of God. Okay? That makes you ready for the rapture. Uh, Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So the key essence for be ready for rapture will be that we get born again, receive the Spirit of Christ in our spirit. Our spirit is made new as just as Christ is. And that is how we have been accepted by the Lord and have the righteousness of God in us. And now we are living by the gift of faith which is given with this righteousness that is a precious faith given to us. That is in 2 Peter 1, 1. The gift, uh, the precious faith which we have been obtained with the righteousness of God. And with that faith, if we are living, that's how we'll be very easily raptured. And what are the consequences of that living by that faith we will be taking further on? So, however, in our attempt to properly emphasize the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that is in Titus 2.11, we have a tend tendency to discount those scriptures that make us responsible for our own readiness to meet the Lord, Jesus Christ, when he returns for us in the rapture. When you read James 2.17, it says, Even so faith, if had not worked, is dead, being alone. Now, the issue comes is, what is this works with the Bible is speaking about? This is speaking about the obedience of faith, not obedience of the law. It is speaking about the obedience of faith, which is to be there. And when, uh, when James is describing this, he says very clearly, it is like looking, looking into the mirror. Uh, and when we see how we are looking and then we forget. That means our spiritual state, our what we are in the spirit can be known by looking into the word of God and what the word says about us. When it says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that's all that is the reason we are righteous. Not by our works, not by our good deeds or merits or demerits. So that is how you, that is obedience of faith. When it says with his stripes I am healed, that is the ultimate. What is the spiritual realm speaking? That by his stripes we are healed. Now if you are seeing the report, medical report, or if maybe you have some symptoms in your body, you may think, no, no, it's not so. That is wrong. Actually, your spiritual status is what the word says. And when you stand on that, that is how the obedience of faith comes and the manifestation will come very easily. So that's what the word says. So uh, having faith without works, that is the obedience of faith, all the faith is dead, it says. Now, uh, starting with this thing that if we are born again and all and we have received salvation, that means if we will be making a grave mistake to assume that any action that we have taken in the past will be sufficient by itself to ensure our readiness to be raptured but to continually until unless we are continually washed by the word of God. See, this is what we have to be very clear regarding rapture <clears throat> that after uh, for the rapture that after we becoming a born again child of God we have received the spirit of Christ in us we have the complete word of God in our spirit and we have Christ in us then Daily, we have to be washed by the word of God. That's what it says in Ephesians 5, 25, 26 and 27. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present us to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That is the requirement of rapture. And who is doing it? It says the word of God is doing it. That is how it will happen. Nobody else can do it. It has to be you accepting the word and taking a wash daily. See, it is something like this. If I go into the bathroom and just seeing the soap will not clean me, I have to apply it. Then only I will be cleansed. So that is how we as a believer, we have to walk after our salvation. 
being washed by the word of God. Uh, this is very much required because without that, we will never be cleansed in our soul and body. In your spirit, the day you are accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your salvation, your born again spirit is completely perfect, 100% pure, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Nothing sin can enter into it. But yet in your soul and body, you need the washing. Even if you remember when Jesus washed the foot, foot of his disciples, then John, uh, yeah, uh, Peter came and said, No, no, Lord, wash me completely. What did Jesus say? No, you don't need the washing. What he meant was that your spirit has been born again. It doesn't need washing and washing again because it has been cleansed and made completely righteous. It is 100% of pure gold. That is the righteousness of God many times mentioned. And But when we walk in this world, we are affected by the dearth of this world, the sin and everything. That is where we need the washing of the word of God. That is how we are cleansed in our soul and as well as in the body. Soul, that's why Paul very clearly says in Romans 12, to do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may know the good, acceptable and perfect will of God in your life. And what is the perfect will of God in our life? To be raptured with him when he comes. That is what is necessary. So I hope this is clear till now. I, you are grasping these things beautifully. Now it comes. Uh, many times people will indulge you into things like, okay, God will be granting you, you can indulge in sin and you can commit or uh, keep on committing sin and still rapture will take place with you. I think that we have to be very cautious. Because when we see in the word, what is the expectation of God according to the word is totally necessary, which is continuing a practical holiness that is by the grace of God that holiness will be inside you. When we read Hebrews 12, 14, it says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. See, if you are not taking the grace of God regularly in your life, you have been saved by grace through faith as well as you have to walk by grace through faith only. That is the time, lest any foot root of bitterness spring up, up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. See, you missing the grace can make defilement in the church, if you know that. That is what the word is saying. And that is where we have to see that we have to walk in holiness and that is also continual holiness that is by walking by grace. That is the person Jesus Christ in us. That is what grace is. So I hope that is how we have to be. That is the expectation for a church to be raptured or a believer to be raptured. Now, when we further go, what, what must we do to be ready for the rapture? Again, a question comes. Our readiness to be raptured is summed up in the declaration, trust Jesus for all things pertaining to life and to godliness. That's the crux of all a believer's life is. It uh, very clearly says in 2 Peter 1.3, According to his divine power, that is the power of the Holy Spirit given to us, that is the born again spirit, hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. He has not called us in sin. He has called us for glory and virtue. That is what is the expectation of our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to take his church. Now, uh, we can also motivate those people who are still alive, who have not received the born again spirit and all, because there is a promise beautiful in the rapture verse also in 1st Thessalonica 4.17. So those who are, even there are many professions, like I was till the age of 40, so-called Christian, but not born again and nothing. So such people also can be taught or understood that there is any such thing as a rapture who do not realize that. They should know from 1st Thessalonica 4.17, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That means there is a hope 
if anybody is still alive and is alive before the rapture also, if he is taking these steps of getting born again, receiving the Spirit, and then walking by the Spirit, I think he can also be taken up by the Lord very easily. That is the condition which he expects. So, now if they are at the time trusting Jesus for all things pertaining to life and godliness, that is how the verse says. Now if we say, see further, uh, where we have to be, such people have to be cautious who have not yet get, got born again. It says in Luke 21, 34, And take heed to yourself, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unaware. That is what the problem is. Because nobody knows when he is going to come. So it is better to get prepared and even those who have not yet been prepared, we as believers have to teach them why they have to be prepared. Further in Luke 21, 36 he says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That means prayer is the expression of our faith. That is one of the very strong way we express that there is God and God, we can believe on God. And when we pray God, we know that even when He has not been seen by us, but He exists and He shows manifestation in different ways in our lives. Now the problem with most of the religious Christian is that they will start preparing a checklist and it may go into great numbers with all these things and do's and don'ts. And if trying to do that, you can miss the rapture because that all creates your self-righteousness. And by your self-righteousness, you cannot be raptured. So the best way is why it has to be done quickly because the rapture will take place in the twinkling of an eye. That's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. It will not take... It will, God is not going to give you some lengthy time for rapture when it is going to occur when He's coming. He's coming... And everything is happening in a twinkling of the eye. And over and above, we don't know what is the date and time of His coming. So, we have to be prepared rightly according to the Word of God, as I am giving the idea from these verses. So, so how it is happening is only by an active faith, not a passive faith active faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for everything we have to believe. And that is how it will going to happen in our lives that we can be raptured. That is what Jesus said in Mark 11.22 Have faith in God. In the King James Version it further says have faith of God. That is the active faith which you have when you know the truths of the word of God. So Saying all these verses, we are clear now to uh, put a concise way that we have to get born again. We have to be walking in uh, by faith only, faith of what Jesus has done on his merits that we are receiving. All is received by grace through faith. So in practice, we can encourage our faith and thereby our readiness with the following suggestions which I am giving you, which can make you know what the word of God says, how we can be ready for the rapture. First is, aim at walking after Christ Jesus perfectly. That is what our aim should be always. That's in 1 Peter 2.21. For even hereunto, where we call, where we call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That is the main goal of a believer to walk. Right? Okay. Now then we see, if we do aim, if we do aim at walking perfectly after the Lord Jesus, then it is assured that we will, uh, if we are not walking perfectly after the Lord Jesus, then if we can miss the mark of the high calling. That's what Philippians 3.14 says. High calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, that has to be a very considered effort 
to walk in perfectness what Jesus wants us to do. We must adopt the same standard by which God measures us, nothing less than perfection of heart intent. That is what he says in Matthew 5.48. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That is Matthew 5.48. Now, even in uh, John expresses it in a very beautiful way as a born again child of God, what we will be doing. 1 John 3, 2 and 3 verses say, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, that is we have been born again, and it doth not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that, that is a wonderful confirmation in our hearts. But we know that when he shall appear, that is the second, and that is the coming of Christ for the rapture, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. That is what the essence of the word of God is saying. That a born again child will not get involved into sinning and all. That is not what it says. He will purify himself. That's what by the renewal of your mind, by the word washing, you will get into a better and better position to walk with the Lord without any failures. So no doubt, yet when we are walking in that way also, in the flesh, we would feel much more comfortable tolerating and excusing our failures as unavoidable and defensible. But yet then also in our heart, we would still understand the justice of our Lord's expectation. Why? Because 2 Corinthians 7 1 says, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The fear of God is due to the Spirit of God. And when you are walking in the Spirit of God, you have a reverential fear for God and you will walk in, in the perfecting of the holiness which He wants. And when we actually do these, those things that are pleasing in His sight, that is what is 1 John 3.22 declares. We have to do those things that are pleasing in His sight. So we should have the presence of mind to lay this is not happening due to what we are doing, our self-righteousness. But we have to always have a presence of mind to lay the credit at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was at work in us. That is what the beauty of the Word of God says. He says in Philippians 2.13, to will and to do His good pleasure. That is from the Lord. That is how it is happening. So, what Luke 17.10 declares, So likewise you, when we shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty to do. That is our duty to do as to be walking in the perfectness and the holiness of God by grace, that is the power of the Spirit of God empowering us with those wonderful promises which we see. And the best way to do that is the second thing which I would like to bring into your notice. Walk with the Holy Spirit as your guide. That is the only way we can walk the way God wants to walk us. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That is Romans 8.14. If we have been born again, we are the child of God, then we are led by the Spirit. And that is how we have to take the step and allow the Spirit of God work in us so that we can walk in the fullness of God as He wants us in His plans and wills. So, if we would walk only... Now, there is at times you will come with this sense of the world where the world is always thinking to accomplish in matters of employment, material positions, esteem or enjoyment. But we will be able to have the fellowship and guidance of the Spirit of Christ. And I can assure you, walking by the Spirit of Christ doesn't make you poor. You will be provided everything. Rather, you will be provided in abundance. That is what Jesus promised in John 10.10. 10, I have come to give you life and life of abundance. But the basic essence is coming from Psalms 143.10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. That is how the spirit of God is. He will teach you. He will lead you and He will put you into the land of uprightness. That is how Christ's Spirit is working in everyone. That is how we have to be knowing it. Right? Now, as Christians, we must remember that the greatest gift that God has 
given to us is his son who in turn has given us the gift of eternal life that is in romans 6:23 where it says uh, the wages of sin is death but through jesus christ we have eternal life and the second is the gift of the holy ghost that is mentioned in acts 2:38 when peter was preaching and they got uh, received the spirit of god that is how uh, the holy ghost was received when they heard the message of the gospel so though the manifestation now the issue comes everybody every born again child of god has the spirit of god but the manifestation of the spirit of christ can vary from individual to individual that is to the level how much our minds have been renewed from the word of god the main reason for the spirit's ministry to us is to secure from us a heart of perpetual loving obedience of the almighty's commandments and the commandments i am going to narrate what is the commandment but uh, it's very clearly prophesied in ezekiel 36:27 where it says and i'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them that is ezekiel 36:27 it is also the new covenant mentioned in hebrews 8 how the new covenant will operate that he will be our god and he will put everything and write on our hearts his laws and they will be my people and i will not never remember their sins no more that is how the new covenant of the grace is operating mentioned in hebrews 8 you can read that <clears throat> now the commandment of the lord that is jesus christ what he commanded is in john 13 34 a new commandment i give unto you that you love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another it is not expecting to you to love with your love another people he is expecting to love with his love be your brother why because now in the born again spirit as romans 5 5 mentions the love of god has been poured by the holy spirit into your hearts now you have the love of god which was not available before salvation and that's why now you can love with the love of god as he commanded over here and further in first john 3 23 he says and this is his commandment what is the first commandment that we should believe on the name of his son jesus christ that is our salvation all also walk by that faith only and believing in christ and his merits and love one another as he gave us the commandment that is mentioned in john 13 34 so when we are having the holy spirit the wonderful thing is that we have a witnessing in our spirit that we are the children of god that is in romans 8 16 the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of god none else has to tell us that that how we will be raptured it is the spirit of christ in us who is going to witness us and make us walk worthy according to his plans and doing in the right way not getting entangled in sin and wayward living and all but you will come out of these things and that is how you have a witnessing within your spirit that you are the child of god now thirdly when i speak about is that is first was Uh, walk in the second was walking by the spirit and earlier as i said that commitment to walk according to what christ said we have to do that now we have now the word of god says very clearly we have been saved from sins and not in sins that is how people are misled uh, the bible very clearly says jesus doesn't save us for, uh, in sins but saves us from sins that is in matthew 121 when it says and she shall bear a son and you shall call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins that is the truth of the bible and the real believer is saved from sins not in sins most of the time i am seeing body of christ thinks that we can be sinning and yet we can be saved no that is not the truth of the word of god so sin cannot be accepted in the life of a believer but how it can happen and how it is working out i'll be clarifying you further so god's faithfulness is demonstrated every time whenever we are backslidden actions have been forgiven that is true even when we get we become born again at times we can sin and yet god is forgiving us 
and how it has been quoted by John in 1 John 2, 1, he says, My little children, these things write I unto you. He is going to write something about that we may sin. But before that, he is cautioning. My little children, these things I write unto you, that we, you sin not. Not that he is writing that you can continue in sin. He is saying that you should now not sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So the purpose of writing this thing that we are being forgiven is that you should not sin now. That is how it is saying. Because if we think and presume that we can commit sin with the confidence that we will be forgiven, then we are saying, uh, treating God as He has granted as the indulgence of sin, which is not true. What the Word of God says, what God expects us is, as it says in Romans 6.2, when it came about preaching the gospel and the grace of God, Paul came across people who said, So, we have grace, so we keep on sinning. What he replied, God forbid, that is in Romans 6.2, God forbid, how shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? That was his answer. How a believer can live in sin? That is not true. Uh, even Romans 6.14 says, One who is under the grace, he has no uh, power of uh, sin upon him. Hindi mein bada acha likha. Paap ki prabhuta nahi ho sakti. Kyunki hum anudre ke adin hai. Vyavastha ke adin nahi. So that is how the word of God is saying. So we have to be very clear about this thing. As a believer we cannot keep on sinning. That's what the word of God. Many verses are there. I am not going into it. But these verses are very clear when it says. So only when we are. How it can be happened. How we can get forgiveness and we can walk in it. That is how we have to again come under the mercy, under the grace of God, with which we only have the hope to have the Spirit's testimony that our black sidedness has been forgiven. Why? Because this God is so good. Even in the Old Testament, when Micah writes in 7.18, Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of the, his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. The same God is working today in the New Testament that Jesus Christ, who is not, not, nothing else but the love of love, that is God is love. Now the fourth thing which I would like that we as uh, believers have to agree with, that commune with the Lord through the word and prayer as often as you can. That is a very much requirement of a person who is expecting to be raptured. That is in when you read uh, Psalms 139.7, and this is David expressing it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Uh, that is Psalm 139, 7 to 10. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. And thy right hand shall hold me. That's the wonderful promise of this God. So, our ability to think God's thoughts after him is directly related to our pursuit of his living word. That is how we have to be always involved in the word of God. And that is the best way we see it in Joshua 1.8 where he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Here, why it is saying book of the law? Because well, that was the time only Torah was written, that is the law of God. So that is how it is being denoted. When you read it today, it should be uh, this book of life, that is the word of God. Shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written where therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, God is not expecting that I, when you read the word, he is getting pleased. God is already pleased when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is now we have to know what all the promises are, how God is leading us, what he is doing, what is grace enabling us to do, what is the righteousness of God which can receive through Jesus Christ. That is why we have to be meditating on the word of God. And not only Joshua, when we come to Christ, he said in Mark 4.4, 4, By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, we have to live. We are not to live by bread alone, but live by 
every word proceeding out from the mouth of God. So that is how we have to be living our life if we are expecting a rapture. Also, it should rejoice our heart that the Father invites us to continually pray to Him. When we know from the word, pray without ceasing. That is in First Thessalonians 5.17. Because prayer is one of the best ways of expression of our faith. And then attempt to pray about everything. That is what he is saying. For he is actually listening. That is the promise given in Philippians 4, 6-7. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Everything means everything. Everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Shall, that is not coming by your mental essence. It is coming by your heart. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That is what we have to be kept in Christ. As we are expecting our rapture. Right? So, even First Thessalonians 5.16 very clearly says, We as a believer have to rejoice evermore. We have to be rejoicing. In His goodness towards you and thank Him. That is what He says in First Thessalonica 5. 18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And then worship him because John 4.24 says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, and especially when we are having petitions to him for deliverance from temptation, we, for we will only find success in overcoming sin when we receive his divine assistance. And that is how he told us to pray also. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It is in Matthew also as well as Luke 11, 4. So that makes us that we have to have a prayer life and uh, dwelling in the word of God. And finally, the word of God says that patiently occupy for the Lord Jesus Christ until, the, until he soon returns. That's very clearly mentioned as a command in Luke 19, 13. Occupy till I come. Where into how I have already narrated how we have to be occupied as already said to you. For he said, behold I come quickly. That is in Revelation 22.7. However, our God meets our physical needs. We will and we must cooperatively exert whatever is the necessary labor. So, uh, in Philippians 4.19 he very beautifully says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So, how now we have to cooperate? It is again by grace. We will be laboring a lot due to his grace given to us. We will not become idle or sluggish. When we understand grace, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15.10. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which has bestowed upon me was not in vain. This grace is not a vain grace. But I labored more abundantly. Not merely labored. He says labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. That is the outcome of this grace. You will become a laborious person. Then he says, and then we have to use the promises of God to keep our actions directed in the way that will magnify God and sanctify you. That is purely, very clearly mentioned in 2 Peter 1.4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's why he says washing with the word of God. That's how you become blameless and spotless when he comes. So that is a thing which is a practice of a believer always. So, now after all these actions which you have taken, one more thing which we have to always be doing is to undertake to fortify the saints. See, all our believers, we have to help them, fortify them. When they are getting a dwindling up in their faith, we should support them. That You can read it in Galatians 6 when it is very clearly mentioned. And then he says, to restore the blacks, blacks little people, and win the lost, that is one of the very important things which we have to do as a believer. If we are expecting our rapture, that is what the commandment of the Great Commission we have to do, always. That is what he is expecting. And 
Uh, how you are doing that great commission? Again, this is the opportunity to multiply the talents Christ has given you and to exercise the authority to trample the enemy, Satan. That's in Matthew 10, 1, and he says, And when he had called to him his twelve disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. And in 10, 7, he says, And as you go, proclaim, saying, the kingdom of heaven is in hand, in Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, you have received freely, freely give. You have received everything freely for this thing. You have given authority to do that, and you can do it very easily. So, therefore, if we are to be raptured, we should be able ministers of the new covenant, not living in the old covenant of the law, but in the new covenant of grace, that is the Spirit of God. That is mentioned in 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Who also has made us able ministers. Again, who is he making it? God is making us able ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. I hope everybody is on. You can join, you can join. I can wait for some minutes. So, now if we have to be raptured, we should be able ministers of the new covenant. That is what I was speaking from 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Who also has made us able ministers of the new covenant? Who? God is making us able ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit makes alive. You should definitely read 2 Corinthians 3, 6. It speaks about... The law covenant and the grace covenant and how the grace covenant is much more glorious than the Old Testament covenant which we had. So, what I now say is this is all possible only by grace through faith. Uh, when we see about this thing, uh, let's read Colossians 2, 2 6 to 10. Uh, it's a lengthy, uh, good number of verses. I am going through it. Therefore, as you have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, that is your born again spirit, you have been saved. So walk in him, not walk on yourself, walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith which is the gift of God from Christ that is already I have shared with you. As you have been taught, abounding in with thanksgiving, that is already we have told, we have to be thankful, we have to be praying and thanking God, that is what he is saying. And beware lest anyone rob you through philosophy and vain deceit, according to the tradition of men. That is what the religious Christianity many people speak about. Now he says, according to the elements of the world and not according to Christ. The whole thing has to be according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. See, in Christ, the fullness of Godhead, that is the triune God, God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit were residing. And what he says now is, and you are complete in him. That's why we can be raptured. When we are in Christ, we have the triune God in us. And that's why we are able to do what is being expected to do by us. That is now we can come out of sin, we can walk in holiness, and we can be uh, using our authority to trample serpents and scorpions and come and be submitted unto the Lord and resist the devil and he will flee. All these promises are there. So uh, I will stop for a few minutes over here for your questions and then again I like to share some words which will further strengthen what I am saying. If you have now when we read John 5.24 it says Verily, verily say I unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death into life. That is what is happening. When you have received Christ, when you have become born again, when you have received eternal life, you will come out of sin, you will be walking in holiness and you have passed from death into life. That is what Jesus itself said. Then Romans 5, 8 to 10 very clearly says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved 
by his life. That is what the will of God is, to take you into rapture and take away with him. Then Romans 8, 1 very clearly says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after his, the flesh, but after the spirit. That is what the change comes after be becoming a believer and getting born again. Colossians 1, 22 very beautifully declares, In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you, he is presenting you, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That is what the work of the Lord is. First uh, Colossians 1, 27 again says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is how it is happening, that Christ has now come in you and that is why you will be raptured. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 and 10, he says, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake up or sleep, we should live together with him. Further in 2 Timothy 2, 13, it says, Looking for all blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself, himself a peculiar people jealous of good works. Again the work of the Lord. That's what salvation brings. Hebrews 9.15 And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by the many means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That is a promise of salvation. Hebrews 9.28, he says, So Christ was once offered in to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, he shall appear to second time, and without sin unto salvation. That is how he will be raptured. And Hebrews 10.10 10 and 10.14 again says, How we have been perfected in our spirit and sanctified. Hebrews 11.5, when you see, why was he not? Translated. 